Hello and welcome to newsclick.in. India has had a long history of communal violence and strife. And yet, if you look at Hindi cinema, you'd be surprised because there are very few films that actually deal with subjects like these. It's interesting, in fact, that uh, both, both Manmohan Desai and Yash Chopra began their film careers with films that dealt with the issue of partition in some way or the other, and then for the rest of their lives, never returned to a political subject. In fact, the first important film about the partition, uh, M. S. Satyu's Garam Hava, got made about 25 years after the event. Similarly, about the anti-Sikh riots in 1984, the first films got made about a couple of decades after the event. It's therefore very encouraging that, that already about six, seven years after the anti-Muslim pogrom in Gujarat of 2002, there are already at least two films on the subject, the latest being actor Nandita Das's debut directorial venture, Firak. How was the journey, Nandita, uh, towards making this film? I could write four volumes of books if you have the time to <laughs> hear that. Uh, well, it's been long and challenging. And I think just making a film is a very lonely process overall. And when did um, the first uh, sort of... The, the seed first, of it? Yeah. There was no sort of one fine day kind of a story. I think what happened in Gujarat shook us all. And, uh, you know, for the first time we were seeing images on television. It was the beginning of this news, news channels where they had started reporting minute to minute things that were happening and in fact words like pogrom and genocide and carnage was in a way you know being used so explicitly instead of just calling it a riot right. and uh, so I think it just shook us and because of that I started doing a series of talks in colleges around the issues of identity this notion of the other on communalism and when was this? and uh, this was soon after that I mean I was doing before yeah. as well but I think it sort of intensified my own need to express my own helplessness anger anguish whatever you call it was greater and then when I started doing these talks and even talking to people that you thought you knew all your life you'd realize that conversations became so polarized you know there was an instant them in us there were these passions and flying which sort of had very strong views on it and I felt, so it was a mix of many different things that I felt that maybe I should do a film and tell these stories that exist, lives that exist directly instead of me trying to say it in a talk or a conversation or lecture bazi or whatever. And that's, that's how in fact Firak, the, the germ of Firak was born. Meri gali story is a metaphoric sure, term not sure. all of it is from Gujarat you know sure. it is also from my own life experiences and if you've seen Nasiruddin Shah's character of an old musician the idealism the optimism that he portrays is to do a lot with some of the old people that I have interacted who are like my good friends who you know give me that energy that to hope where sometimes you and I and people like us become more cynical but these people who have seen the best and worst days still have a sense of hope whether it's Mrinal Sen, whether it's Shomitra Chatterjee whether it's Kuldeep Nayar, you know all these people that I've interacted with so the thousand true stories because the fiction and the truth are very mixed and it's beyond a point doesn't matter that such things can happen, is happening, has happened all of that are together so that's why I chose the line and it was kind of a disclaimer the censor board wanted me to say that I have no intentions of hurting anybody's you know views and all all sort of uh, everything is coincidental if there is any resemblance to any scene or person and I said no there is there are some obvious resemblances Absolutely. of real lives and that's why I chose to say that it's a work of fiction based on a thousand true stories 
your film is actually quite relentless isn't it in other words it yeah. it, it barely gives any um, any scope for hope or a hopeful ending and so on except there's a there are slight glimmers at the end of the film in almost all the stories that you that you tell but they're really glimmers they aren't full fledged scenes of hope in that sense um what made you make such a relentlessly dark foreboding kind of a film it is relentless in terms of the tension and the palpable fear that it portrays even though there's no violence in the film the common reaction is god i mean it's a film about violence there's no violence and yet you feel the violence so people are just disturbed and they don't but they don't know how to completely deal with it so in that sense it's relentless in terms of hope or not hope because there are five stories some end with more hopeful things some are open ended some do not end so hopefully because that's that's how life is if you had to take if you had to just pick out five they're not representative of all but they are across class gender community age and you know some like life i mean i i remember one of the drafts i had made it more hopeful where khan saab kind of sings at the very end and says that singing must go on kind of a thing and it's still there singing must go on you know as press had said Absolutely. will there be singing in the dark times and it says yes there will be singing of the dark times so the singing must go on but what is happening in reality we cannot shy away from that i don't want people coming out of the theater saying yeah it really disturbed me but thank god everything is fine let's go and have our pizzas i think the fact that questions remain the fact the last shot is just the child looking at us where it, because the onus is really on us what kind of world we want to create for children for ourselves so i think because of that i just decided that it's got to be mixed and complex like life is apart from the character uh, of the old musician it's the women characters who really stand out in your film and they carry in some sense uh, sort of resources of hope also of resistance is that something right. that is is conscious or i think it's instinctive it's also probably because i'm a woman i've worked with women i've done all these roles and you want to make women just as led i mean i don't think while writing i was thinking oh this is a woman and this is a man but even communal disharmony or communal divisions don't exist in isolation they exist with a class divide they exist with a gender divide and all those complexities need to be there so if deepthi navan and parish ravel story of a middle class household it is not just a hindu muslim story in fact even if that woman was from any other caste it's a more gender thing she just doesn't want to deny the fact she's denied refuge to a muslim woman uh, and now is feeling guilty it's less about the fact that she's muslim as opposed to she's another human being she's another woman and that guilt she's carrying and her relationship with her husband the complete lack of forget love but even dignity and you know what she faces is just as important so i think women have are more led unlike uh, and that's why probably a lot of people say it's it's not a woman's film and yet it's a woman's film and indeed one of the strongest sort of moments in the film is when deepthi navel just silently looks back yeah. at paresh ravel and and his character walks away isn't it right. uh, it's a moment of great strength yeah in fact i remember when i was doing that scene deepthi navel said what you just want me to look at him like what's the emotion no dialogue no like yeah no but even in terms of looks like you know should i be looking angrily or should i be like looking scared questioningly so i'm like you have mastered your strength it is the strength has come from in despite you when she says do you have any honor you know she she kind of resists this without realizing that is her strength that she has begun to question despite the circumstances she is in and in that one look of defiance it's it's a huge step for her you know it's it's like me slapping somebody real hard or you know how one would probably get really upset if one had to really suffer that kind of violence for her that small step of just looking at him says it all and so there are those powerful moments i think especially like you said with women the stories of two friends who are both you know best friends two girls and it's a story of trust and betrayal and how in fear you tend to think that everyone's betraying you so yeah i mean i think as there is a male gaze there must be a female gaze but it's not something that you consciously do it it's it's probably just the gaze you have because you are a woman we are talking to nandita das who's whose first film firaq uh, a very powerful hard hitting film has just hit the theaters stay with us for the second part of this interview